Lolita fashion has nothing to do with the book Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Nothing. This discourse has been a heavy burden over the Western Lolita community for years and still somehow manages to come up every so often. I am going to explore all the ways that we can try to get this through people's head in the most simplest terms. People get so caught up in the name Lolita because they think that a name is what fully defines something. And as someone who hasn't used their legal name in over 20 years, I can proudly tell you that that's not true. Let's have an example. Football. Do you think if I showed up to a Dallas Cowboys game wearing an Arsenal jersey that I could tell the Cowboys fans, yeah, I wore a football jersey because it's called football. So it's all the same, right? It has the same name. How well do you think that would go for me? Or vice versa. You might make the argument that additional words have been added to football, like American football versus English football. But Lolita fashion has done that too. In the West, Lolita fashion is almost always referred to as Lolita fashion, with fashion being added onto it so that we can define these two things separately. You could further argue that Americans have adapted the term soccer for football. And now I can't speak on behalf of English football clubs, but I feel like if you called what they do soccer, they might take a little bit of offense to that. The English speaking community has moved into using the term EGL, which stands for Elegant Gothic Lolita. In the early days of Lolita fashion, this was an umbrella term used for all Lolita, even if it didn't resemble what we generally think of when it comes to Gothic. I personally think that EGL is a great term to use. It's well established and it will lead you to accurate results. But when it comes down to explaining what EGL stands for, you still can't escape that word, Lolita. There have been many instances where people have brought up alternative names for Lolita fashion. And as much as I don't like the name Lolita fashion because of people's associations with Nabokov, I am not going to lead a movement to change it. Because I think that it would be incredibly insensitive to the powerhouse brands that propelled this movement in the first place and still use it. Lolita fashion is more recognized recognizable by name in Japan. My experiences while visiting and wearing the fashion, I had lots of people recognize it and give me compliments. People of all different ages, backgrounds, genders. I remember specifically one couple in their 60s that I talked to who were excited to see me wearing the fashion. And I remembered back to all the times in the United States and Canada that boomers had yelled at me because of the book. When people ask, is Lolita fashion like the book, they're generally referring to Vladimir Nabokov's Lolita. However, there are actual books about Lolita fashion. For example, So Pretty Very Rotten is a collection of essays and comics about actual Lolita fashion and community. There's also Misako's book about Lolita fashion, and both of these can be found at most book retailers. And I really, really suggest them if you want to get more of a sense of what Lolita fashion actually is. So is it like the book? Yeah, it's like this book, <laughs> not that book. This is the part of the video where I was going to try to convince you that the book Lolita is bad. And I am so grateful that I happened to speak with a friend who enjoys the book Lolita and also wears Lolita fashion before filming this, because together we realized that this is an intersection where this discussion often gets lost. Because whether you like the book and adapted films or not really doesn't matter. What matters is that these things are not the same. If you want to have discussions about the book and films, I think that it should be held separately because it will end up distracting from the real point, which is that these things are not the same. I think that if I were to explain my own thoughts and feelings towards the book, there would be people who wouldn't listen to what I have to say afterwards, which is taking away from my point that these things are not the same. You don't have to convince me to like the book. I don't have to convince you to not like the book. We just both have to agree. There are a few things about the book I would like to discuss that I don't think are opinion based. They're just facts about the book that I think will help explain a little bit more about how they are different. The story in the book Lolita is presented in a foreword by a fictitious John Ray Jr., who apparently found this memoir of someone who goes by the name of Humbert Humbert. 
This isn't a take it as it is kind of story. If you read the book Lolita, the perspective comes from an unreliable narrator. In the book's canon, the character Humbert Humbert is the one who has written this story with the intent for people to read it. Therefore, we can't take what he says as objectively true because he wants people to sympathize and relate to him. As a child, Humbert Humbert fell in love with one of his friends, Annabelle, but she passed away, and this experience caused him to have a sexual desire towards 9 to 14 year old girls, which she refers to as nymphettes, not lolitas. After his house burns down, a widow named Charlotte offers to let him stay with her, and she has a 12 year old daughter named Dolores, also known as Do, Dolita, Dolly, Lo, Lola, and Lolita. A nickname given to one character, not a group of people. From this story, the word Lolita has become an eponym, a word taken from an imaginary person or name and given meaning. Unfortunately, Lolita has become known in the English language as a precociously seductive young girl without connotations of victimization. But here's the thing, the entire story of Lolita, as in the book and films, is coming from Humbert Humbert's perspective. So who knows what Dolores, aka Lolita, even actually felt and experienced. This was a literal child who was groomed by an adult man. To reiterate, this is also what Humbert Humbert is saying about Lolita. We don't know if she even behaved this way. And remember, Nabokov did not create the word Lolita. Lolita has existed as just a name in Spanish for quite a long time. It's a short form of Dolores, similar to how Bill is short for William. So why can't we isolate the book Lolita? Which again, I think the definition that people have taken from that title is more suited to Nymphette and not the name of a character. We should recognize Lolita as the title of that book and the name of one of the characters, but we should also recognize that it's just a name for actual people as well as a Japanese substyle. Why can't all of these things exist separately? Because people get caught up in the shock of it they feel an emotional response and don't listen. I'm going to briefly mention Lolicon as it's another common misconception that's often brought up when people discuss Lolita fashion. The Lolita Complex is a book by Russell Trainer defines Lolita Complex as an attraction towards young girls or pubescent girls by adult males. I think that this is taking away from the actual victims themselves and talking about it more as the compulsion. I would have much preferred that he call this the nymphette complex because that is more accurate to what Nabokov's original description meant. The Lolita complex is then what inspired Japanese media to start using the term lolicon which describes essentially the same thing, an attraction to young girls, an individual with such an attraction, as well as the genre lolicon in manga and anime. And honestly, I don't know why lolicon exists. I don't know why it's okay for it to exist. <laughs> that these things are not the same. <laughs> so what is Lolita fashion? And how did it get its name? The exact origins of Lolita fashion are unknown, although it can be traced as far back as the 1960s as taking inspirations from another style called Natural K, which glorified a simpler prairie lifestyle and also had Victorian era influences. Another style branched off in the 1970s called Otome, which means maiden. It is often referred to as a less elaborate Lolita fashion, although it still exists today separate from Lolita fashion. Simultaneously throughout the 1970s, there was a rise in cute and kawaii culture. A large driving force behind this being Sanrio, formally established in 1973. From 1977 to 1998, a large area of Harajuku shopping district would close to car traffic on Sundays. This is where people would go in order to escape the rigid office culture in Japan and express themselves, creating new and unique subcultures and fashion. Lolita fashion being one of them, although I'm not sure what it was referred to at that time. With early brands such as Pink House, Milk, and Pretty, 
later changed to angelic pretty. What we now know as Lolita fashion was gaining a lot of traction through the 1980s and 90s, largely attributed to visual K brands starting to wear this style. However, the social pressures in Japan for women in the 1980s was to marry a man. The ultimate goal was to be a wife and get married and settle down. So much so that a derogative term arose at this time, Christmas cake, which meant that any woman over the age of 25 was no good anymore. Lolita fashion was and still is a rebellion to this. The wearers are dressing for themselves and not with the intention to attract a mate. The modest nature of Lolita fashion is very different from the revealing and sexy styles of the 1980s and 90s. Now I've found that some Lolitas have taken this a little too far because they're mostly tired of being sexualized due to the book and will often reject anything sexual or revealing. And I just want to say it's okay to do both, you don't have to choose one or the other. What's really important is that you wear what you want to and that you can make that choice. You aren't trying to fit into someone else's narrative, you aren't trying to get acceptance from someone else or society, you're just wearing what you want to. And this is the heart and soul and the driving force behind Lolita fashion. The first known use of the term Lolita for the fashion was in the September 1987 issue of Ryoko Sushin. But I can't say that the magazine came up with the name for it. It's most likely that people were already using this term in Harajuku in person in order to identify the style that they were wearing. It's possible whoever coined the name Lolita for Lolita fashion just like the way it sounded and like the name. Most sources cite that the name was chosen because Japanese speakers thought it was cute and enjoyed saying it. Lolita fashion is just about clothes. There's no role playing aspect, you're not a character, you don't change who you are, it's not cosplay, it's just people wearing clothes, which I understand is hard to comprehend because it is so eccentric and different. What Su Leon and Dominique Swan wore in both of the films, Lolita, are actually costumes. This is contemporary costume design chosen by costume designers in order to portray a character. If you look at these actual clothing pieces side by side, you can clearly see that they look nothing like one another. The silhouettes are completely different, the fabrics are different, the prints are different, the way that they're styled is different. In Fet fashion, which was inspired by the costumes of the films Lolita. Nymphette fashion looks nothing like Lolita fashion. I just want to say I don't take credit for this information. These are all things that I have learned throughout the years from different community members, bloggers, and creators. I encourage you to do more research on your own. Listen to other Lolitas, watch other Lolita channels, TikToks, Instagram. There's so much information now at your disposal. There are also other people who are even more educated in this topic and have more information than I do. I was motivated to make this video because of the misinformation that was spread on Twitter and the subsequent backlash from Lolitas. The Lolita fashion tag on Twitter has now been flooded with so much Lolita information, so many resources and accounts of Lolita. I realize that I haven't made a video about this before because I'm just tired of talking about it, but I realize how important it is to have these sort of things documented. I hope this video has helped you understand Lolita fashion a bit more and give you tools that may help you in the future explain it to people. Whether you share this video or this information by word of mouth, I am incredibly grateful to you, whether you're a Lolita or not. The only way that we can grow and create separation between the Lolita book and Lolita fashion is to not give up and continually educate people. Believe it or not, I have noticed a significant difference in the last five years. Thanks to media contributions like Vice making documentaries about Lolita fashion, I've seen people in Toronto who have recognized it from that and we are making steps forward. We just have to continue it. No matter how grueling and repetitive it becomes, it will help. Thank you so much for supporting me and for supporting this community. And as always, stay lovely.